Hi guys, what's up and welcome back! Flavio Gargano here for musicinthemirror.com Today I'm gonna show you how to make the tracks we made previously sit properly into the mix. Mixing is a really complex topic that needs a lot of experience and training, but today I'm gonna give you some guidelines to follow. Remember, each kind of music needs a different mixing techniques. Anyway, let's move in and unleash your music! Before starting, I have two advices for you. Advice number one, stay organized. Previously, we created the drum track splitting the MIDI channel for each sample that have been routed into individual mixer channel. Then I grouped this into a folder track to keep my project clean, leaving room for further tracks. Advice number two, visualization tools. It's very important especially if you don't own a proper sound system that allows you to listen the whole frequency range to use a visual reference. Here's come frequency. It's a very nice EQ with a lot of function and a nice frequency visualizer. Second, the multiscope. This tool shows you the sound position in the space and that's very important for the mono stereo compatibility. I'm gonna explain it in a while. But now let's work on the kick. I'm gonna add a plugin called Magneto 2. This is basically a frequency saturator. I wanna boost the frequencies between 70 and 150 Hz. So go here, type 70 and 150. Now let's pump it up. I wanna be very generous like that. Another thing I'm gonna do is to emphasize the snap of my kick and I can do that by increasing around 7.5 kHz. Can you see this point? It's the attack of my kick, so I'm gonna boost it a little, just a few dBs, like that. Then I wanna add a soft limiter. I want to be careful and not kick out the transients. Now guys, this is very important. Keep in mind, when you compress, the dry and wet signal peak level must be the same. For example, let me bypass the insert so we hear the dry signal. As you can see, we are around minus 10.5 dB. Now I turn the insert back on and I must be careful not to cross that level. To do that, I can tweak the limiter output, like that. Now, let's see the before and after. Before and after. Well, it's already something so, I noticed the original sample is not exactly in the center, and this is not good, but I can fix it. What I'm gonna do is to load a plugin called Stereo Enhancer. So, load the plugin and click on Mono. Fix it. Very easy, isn't it? Next, the snare drum. Let me first high pass the low frequency around 120 Hz. Now I'm gonna show you a technique to spot and remove the annoying frequencies. So, activate the EQ, make the cube bell more tight and add some gain. Try to navigate through the frequencies, looking for any annoying sound. For example, this one. Do you hear it? So, right click, choose Invert EQ settings. Let's check it out. Now I want to add more body to my snare and reduce the high frequencies just a little bit. And I want to add a multiband compressor to boost around the mid-range frequencies, lower the threshold a bit, 
like that ratio I go for four and then I want to add another compressor to warm up the sound this time I go for a tube compressor increase the input the drive and increase the mix as well just a touch As a general guideline, kick level has to be close to 0 dB and the snare 4 or 5 dB lower. Okay, for the hi-hat we used two sounds. Our target now is to make them blend together properly. A cool way to do that is to boost some frequency on one of them and remove the same on the other. That's a nice chance to use my second advice, visualization tools. So. Let's use it and try to spot the main frequencies. Now, right click, copy, move on the other channel EQ, right click, paste, and right click again and select Invert EQ Settings. If you prefer, you can split these two channels slightly left and right to create a little stellar enhancement, but for the moment I leave it in the center. Let's check the mix. Sounds pretty good so far, isn't it? For the crash, same papillae. Remove the useless frequencies, around, let's say, 150, and give it some body, around 350. Now cut uh, less more 3 dBs, around 200 Hz and add a little shine to make it gently stand out. Same for the cobalt. Clean up the crease, this guy. Some sparkles. Remove around 1.3 kHz and set it to the right level. In order to have a quick control of all the drum tracks, you can add a group, tracks or even a fader track. Now, let's mix the bass. I want my bass to stay in the center and blend properly with the kick. But at the same time I want to give it a stereo effect. To do that I'm gonna use a technique called Parallel EQ. So, first of all let's export the bass. Then. On the main bass track, I'm gonna remove the high frequencies. Load the magneto. And boost between 40 to 100 Hz. Solo. Okay. Next, I want to add a multiband compressor for the low frequencies. Set the first band around 200 and compress like that. Set the first band around 200. Now, I want to keep the signal in the center, so I'm going to add a stereo enhancer and set it to mono. Let's add a limiter to get rid of some peaks. Go to the bounced bass track and add a high pass filter around 200 Hz, because I want to remove the low frequencies. Load the magneto, solo, and increase between 152 kilohertz. Boost it up like that. 
Then I'm gonna add a cloner that allows me to create virtual copies of the signal and place it into the stereo scene. Increase spatial, mix, and I reduce the delay just a touch. Another thing I'm gonna do is to add a limiter and I wanna be aggressive this time. Therefore, I want to boost around 1 kHz. Done! Let's check the mix. Now I'm going to tweak the levels starting from the very bottom and raising it gradually. Like that. Good! Now my bass sounds wide and at the same time is correctly positioned. Next one, the piano. For the piano track, as usual, I clean the unwanted frequencies. Boost the middle frequencies a little bit. Be careful here between 150-300 Hz, cause these frequencies give to the mix a muddy sound. So I want to decrease it a little bit. Ok, now let's add the compressor. I go for this one. I check auto release and auto makeup and turn the mix sound up to 100%. Ratio 4. Attack 5 milliseconds. And gradually load the threshold and Of course you must base your choices by listing the reference. Always try to get as much close as you can. Let's check the level with the other tracks. Pretty good so far. Last but not least, the lead synth. As you will know, I'm gonna clean the unwanted frequencies. And I wanna boost slightly around 2.5 kHz, just a few dBs. Another thing I wanna do is to add a compressor. I go for vintage compressor. Intensity 4. Let's add some fuel and you see? The compressor is doing its job and of course lower the output to a safe level, like that. The purpose of this compression is to create a subtle background that gives to the lead synth a nice and wide space. Ok, I'm pretty satisfied. Of course you can add more tweaks, go back to the virtual instruments, make sign change, all within this project. But don't forget, always check the reference. The really really last step is the mastering. That's a very very long and complex topic. By the way, for now let's keep it very simple. I just want to add a multiband compressor, leave it as it is just to slightly compress the uppermost frequencies. And I'm gonna add a limiter just to gain some dBs without killing the transients. And that's all guys, I'm very excited because we craft an entire song starting from zero and taking care of the old pipeline. Let's have a ride on a final mix. Amazing tutorials are on the way, so if you have any suggestion, please leave a comment, thumbs up, and remember stay creative and unleash your music. Don't